Hi friends, welcome back to the Molecular Biology series lectures. This is the sixth lecture in the series and we'll be discussing today replication. I'll be giving you the introduction of the process and tell you what uh, is leading and lagging strand, what is a replicosome or replisome, and uh, what are the chemical reactions which take place in the replication process. So to begin with the replication process, we should know the previous uh, certain concepts. The first concept uh, which we had already cleared is the central dogma, which was proposed by Francis Crick. And it mentions that there is a unidirectional flow of information, which I told you that it is later on modified. And now uh, it encompasses all the processes, whether DNA synthesizes RNA or backwards also. So you should be acquainted with this concept of um, central dogma. And then the another concept was the gene expression, which I have already cleared also in some other video, which you sh should be aware of by now. So the gene expression uh, as proposed by the Francis Crick uh, uh, in the eukaryotes actually follows the replication, transcription and translation. But uh, in between these processes, I had already told you that there are certain pre, post or co-modification processes which do take place. In simple terms, in eukaryotes, uh, the following uh, methodology and following processes take place like uh, this. The replication follows uh, transcription, then post-transcriptional editing, post-transcriptional modifications, then translation, then after the translation there is also post-translation modifications and pre-folding modifications. So this is the simplest uh, way by, by which we can mention or give the outline of the gene expressions uh, in the eukaryotic cell. So again the concept is starting from the DNA and ending at protein and the middle molecule is the RNA itself. So replication process is simply the duplication of the genome and the uh, genome which gets duplicated is called as the parental genome and the copies uh, which are made thereof are called as daughter genome. You can see in the right hand side diagram the parental genome is this the single copy and out of this uh, two copies per strand are produced uh, as daughter genomes. Replication process in itself is very complex and uh, involves several enzymes. The central uh, role is played by the uh, specialized enzymes. Those are called as polymerases. And the whole uh, replication process, uh, the enzymes involved directly or indir indirectly uh, are called as replisome. So replisome encompasses polymerases plus all other enzymes which help in the replication process. Another important thing about the replication process is its directionality. The directional thing is that the replication process takes place in five prime, three prime direction. The three prime end being the one which is being extended, which is being added by the new DNTPs. So three prime end is actually the end containing hydroxyl group, which acts as an extension end to the uh, incoming DNTPs. As you can see in the uh, encompassing diagram here, the parental DNA is allowing the synthesis of a new daughter strand by the polymerases and the new DNTPs here are added to the three prime hydroxyl extension end. Since you know that uh, DNA is a duplex molecule containing two strands, only one strand can act as uh, in this direction. Uh, and this is called as the leading strand. The leading strand uh, is actually the strand in which the five prime, three prime DNA synthesis proceeds in the same direction as the direction of the replication fork. The direction of the replication fork, you can see in the diagram, if we take this uh, left and right here, uh, the direction of replication fork is from the left to the from the right to the left and uh, the leading strand is also moving in the same direction. So leading strand synthesis takes place in the five prime, three prime uh, synthesis direction and in the direction of the replication four. Whereas the lagging, lagging strand you will see moves in the opposite direction. The synthesis takes place in the opposite direction than the direction of the replication fork. In other words, we can say that leading strand directs the synthesis of a new daughter DNA in continuous manner, while as the lagging strand directs the synthesis of a new daughter DNA in a discontinuous manner. You can see in the right hand side diagram, 
the movement of a replication fork is from the left to right and the leading strand is also synthesizing in the same direction and the new daughter DNA which is being synthesized on it is synthesized in a continuous manner as a single strand whereas in a lagging strand it is in a discontinuous manner and these uh, discontinuity uh, was discovered by a scientist called as Riji Okazaki and he named these discontinuous strands of a new daughter DNA being synthesized on the lagging strand as uh, Okazaki fragments. So leading and lagging strand is uh, based upon their directionality as well as whether it is a continuous uh, synthesis or a semi discontinuous manner. In a lagging strand it is always semi discontinuous and in fragments called as Okazaki fragments. DNA synthesis is actually a chemical reaction. The reaction is actually catalyzed by the three prime hydroxyl group of the uh, strand which is being synthesized. The three prime hydroxyl group of this strand acts as a nucleophile which uh, uh, causes a nucleophilic attack on the incoming DNTPs at alpha phosphate. You can see in the diagram here that alpha phosphate uh, of the incoming DNTPs is being attacked nucleophilically by the hydroxyl group of the growing uh, daughter DNA and this causes the uh, attachment of a new bond which is, uh, the synthesis of a new bond the phosphodiester bond which uh, attaches the incoming uh, nucleotide with the growing um, daughter DNA and uh, thereby extending it. So the nucleophilic attack is uh, on the alpha phosphorus uh, of the incoming deoxynucleoside 5 prime triphosphates. So in this way the chemical reaction extends the DNA one step at a time. So as we know now the replication is nothing but a chemical reaction uh, which is uh, the nucleophilic attack of the 3 prime hydroxyl group to, on the incoming nucleotides. The rate at which the addition of the nucleotides happens to the growing uh, daughter DNA strand or the template strand by the polymerases will define its processivity. So processivity is actually the function of a polymerase. Polymerases are categorized based upon their processivity, based upon their average number of nucleotides added to the newly growing daughter strand uh, without getting dissociated from the template. So the idea is that DNA polymerase will get associated with the template, the parental DNA, then it will continuously add the nucleotides to the growing daughter DNA without itself getting dissociated from the template strand. And this whole thing measures its processivity. Since the nucleophilic attack will uh, vary uh, and it will have a effect on the processivity of the DNA polymerases as well. Usually DNA polymerases have a processivity of few to many thousands. So the capability of a polymerase in itself and the higher the processivity of the uh, polymerases, the better it is. Last but not the least uh, is the another concept of replication which is its accuracy. How accurate are the DNA polymerases in duplicating the information from a parental strand to the daughter strands and it is measured as overall fidelity which is given as its error rate. Error rate is given as the uh, ability of a polymerase to do the one error every 10 raised power 9 to 10 raised power 10. This is for the eukaryotes. For example, in uh, E. coli, it uh, is usually measured as uh, one error per thousand or 10,000 replication. This is the overall accuracy of the replication. Actually, this is the overall accuracy of the polymerases which synthesize the daughter strand. How uh, accurate is the replication in eukaryotes and how the polymerases manage such a high accuracy is uh, partly explained by the three concepts. First concept is the overall geometry between the complementary bases. You know that DNA uh, in DNA that A base pairs with T and G base pairs with C and they have particular uh, geometry uh, among themselves. So the polymerase is, uh, is able to check this uh, geometry between the A, T and G, C so as to distinguish between them and to distinguish between the uh, uncomplementary of the A with C or G with T. Second thing is the AT and GC in itself uh, 
base pairs interact with the polymerase itself. So the polymerase knows the whole geometry of the AT and also the interactions enables them to distinguish the wrong base pairings. Third concept is the ability of a polymerase in itself uh, to double check and excise the wrongly added nucleotide with the help of it is 3 prime 5 prime exonuclease activity. Remember the 3 prime 5 prime exonuclease activity is in the reverse of the polymerase activity. We know that polymerase activity is from 5 prime 3 prime and the exonuclease activity is actually reverse of the polymerase activity. So this is the why how it uh, enables the polymerase to check and then to remove the added nucleotide from the growing dotted strand and the information is being again uh, checked uh, in context with the template strand on which this uh, dotted strand is being synthesized. So this alone increases the accuracy of the polymerases by 10 raised power 2 to 10 raised power 3. The combined effect of all these uh, usually add up to 10 raised power 7 to 10 raised power 8 um, overall fidelity and rest is still unexplained by the molecular biology. I hope you enjoyed this lecture and it clarified your uh, basic concepts of the replication. The next lecture will be on the machinery of the replication process. If you like the contents of the video, you can order the book Molecular Biology and Biotechniques from Amazon. It's available both in Kindle and paperback format. And do subscribe to my channel uh, for further uh, videos which I will upload in due time.